Install ice shield at all butter lines? Gutter lines. At the gutter line. Oh, gutter line. At the eve, right. I was wondering what a butter line was. Butter line. I was going to stand in it. <laughs> this is the plate of Richard Brown. He says he hired the defendant to install a new roof on his house. And apparently he subbed the job out to a bunch of kids who had no idea what they were doing. The defendant laughed in his face when he complained about his shoddy work, which won't pass inspection. And he's here suing a louse for $2,000. The cost to repair his roof. This is the defendant, John Freer. He says he did a great job for his neighbor and gave the guy a great deal. The plaintiff's an extremely cheap man. He's been doing roofing work since he's 18 years old, and the plaintiff is not gonna have a leg to stand on today. He's accused of creating a leaky situation. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Richard Brown, you are suing your former friend and neighbor, John Freer, for $2,000 that you estimate it will cost to fix an inadequate roof that you say he installed on your home. Yes, right. ma'am. So you hire him to do your roof. Do you have the original contract that you signed with him? Yes. May I see it? Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Roofing work at above address. Remove all roofing. Plywood replacement is $60 per sheet, I guess, as needed That's if addition. it was rotted. Correct. So it was a shingle roof? Asphalt shingle. Okay. So you ripped all of that out, and mm -hmm. then the deal you have with him is he's going to pay you how much? Uh, $5,280 plus... Plus plywood. Plywood that would be replaced only if necessary, because right. some plywood rots underneath the shingles and some doesn't. Correct. How many did you have to replace? There's quite a few boards on that. Ten boards. But right. it, it install just... ice shield at all butter lines? What gutter lines. At the gutter line. Oh, gutter line. At the eve, right. I was wondering what a butter yeah. line was. Butter line. I was going to stand in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. At all gutter lines. Install lifetime 50-year timber line. What does that mean? Uh, timber line is a dimensional shingle. It's from a specific brand, but that's just the style of shingle it is. It's a solid shingle with two layers thick on four parts of the bottom reflash of it. Reflash where necessary on it. What is reflash mean? Reflashing is installing aluminum at walls. Uh, you have to do that to keep it watertight because the shingle just right into the wall without the aluminum flashing, you know, a certain size. Where bent necessary in on all walls and chimney. Install new pipe. Flanges. What are those? Flanges are what goes over the pipe to keep it watertight. If you come up with just the shingles, you'll have the hole. Uh, you actually go up to the pipe put the flange down, roof around the back of the flange, and the water runs downhill onto the flange and onto the shingles. Clean and remove all debris, 10-year warranty on labor. Job is to take two to three days to complete. All right, so you do the job, and that job is done October of 2016, correct? Correct. All right, when's the first time you hear from him? Um, yeah, I heard from him probably three months ago, probably three months ago, and... He had said he had a home inspection. The home inspection had determined, you know, this, this, and this. Yeah, had a lot of complaints. Tell me about the home inspection. You were trying to sell it? When I put the house on the market, and I didn't go up on the roof. I didn't realize that when, like, when the roof actually John did the skylight, the roof had a dip in it where that it should have been bored. If it's a dip in it, that's a problem. It should not be a dip. It should be like a... Um, Flat. You have, like, a total, like, um, like a shape like this. Yeah. If it's just dipping in it, your job is to find out. I mean, what? When you strip the roof, if it's a bad board, I'm paying you for board. If it's more, you just say, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. There should be no dip. It collects water. I, it's a problem. This picture, guy, you have to see. I have to show you, if you don't mind. Let me see the pictures. Thank you. So what happens, though? I contact John over, God, had to be about over 15 times. What I mean, I went by the house several times. Wait, wait, no. But the first thing that happens is, did you have a buyer who hired an inspector who went that up there? That came along. Yes, I did. Okay, so when you're calling him, that's after the inspector. That's be before that incident came about. Because Why are you calling him 15 because times? Because John 
they left stuff like the, the flasher or the aluminum, stuff was hanging. I told John, I said, you need to come and check out, see some of your work. He called me, he said, I'm coming. And he don't show, so. And that's visual damage you're seeing? Now, this visual damage, I'm stepping back and seeing that, damn, they got a slope end up over the skylight. So I would tell him, John, you need to come and see because now, oh, I told you skylight is old. John, it ain't about the skylight no more. You need to come and see. So the thing is, he haven't made no temp. I made several. So temp. then you're, uh, so then get to this point. Okay. So you get an offer on the house or somebody wants to inspect the house, they hire their own inspector. Yeah. That inspector issues a report. Yeah. Do you have that report? Yes, I do. Thank you. Did you end up going on the roof? Yes. Did someone, what is this a picture of? This first one? Uh, I'm going to need you to come on over sure, here. Come up. Right on this corner. Right there on that corner. All right. What is that a picture of? What am I supposed to see in that picture? I'm this is the duct. This is the flash around the chimney. Right. Where that wasn't put on properly. Okay. Can you show me? Show me in that picture okay, what's where, not proper. Right this is the same picture. But it, what happened is it should be under the shingle, not a, on top of the okay. shingle. Plus, it's with cork with. Instead of it actually um, laying flat to the chimney, uh -huh. it's open. It's so much open where the people came up there and they rejected, rejected. It so much. So, because, like, in other words, that gap between this metal thing and the and the chimney. And it went all the way around. What's that a picture of? Tell me what I'm. These seeing. are the the nails where that you'll see a better one where they just threw tar on it. And this is where that, the, the, the flash is where that. That's supposed to be under the shingle. Yes. And um, this is the bad work we call patch up. And um, this is where that, um, you'll see another one to a decaying. Now, it's not even a year yet. And when water, if you're not done properly, water will run under it and it run into the kitchen. So I wanted to ask him, could he come back, take a look at the gentleman because I like John. I found John to be a pretty good neighbor, but don't shaft me after you do the work. What's this a picture? That's nails, unacceptable. Look, I've been a, I've been a contractor, general contractor, for over 38 years. You're a general contractor? You weren't on the roof before paying the roofer? I'm Because stunned. I trust a man. What do you trust that way? If anything, you've lived long enough to know that you need to check it out. Go ahead, go back. Okay. <laughs> what say you to this? Come on over I here. Can't, yeah, I can't see it. Did you ever go back up on that roof when he was complaining? I was on it. Okay. What's up with that? It's sealed. I don't know what that means. Isn't this supposed to be under the shingles? And isn't this no, not supposed? Is and isn't actually, this not supposed? Isn't this supposed to be right. flush against the brick? All right. First off, when you have a chimney, you have a three-part flashing system. You have your bottom pan, your top pan over the back step, flashing up the side, and then counter flashing around the perimeter of that. What you're looking at is counter flashing. There's flashing underneath that also. There's a back pan that runs down and then up and under the shingles. You can't see it. You're not supposed to see it. It's okay, supposed to be hidden, but right? Why is there a gap? Because these brick. Right? When you're bending metal for brick, you have to bend the metal out at the top and then seal it on the top. Yeah, but that doesn't look very good. What it and, it's not, and I don't mean aesthetically. I mean in I, terms of what may happen. As, as far as aesthetics, right? Roofing is in all aesthetics. It, I, I, as I said, I don't mean aesthetically that it doesn't look good. I mean as far as, you know, possible water and ice intrusion later. Look at, I mean, there's a big gap. It's not a gap. It's sealed. It is sealed around the perimeter of the top. Uh, not according to the people who came and took a look at it. And well, then what's the deal with the depression there? Right. That's, if you look, this is the skylight. Right above here, right, the skylight flange comes up and around the perimeter of the back, right? It's not actually that, if, it's, no? it's not actually that it's depressed. It's that it's actually built up from the flange going around the perimeter. That height difference causes the shingles at the top. Yeah, but can't you compensate for that when you're putting a new roof in? You're not supposed to. It's not something that's an issue after the fact. I mean, if there was... But wa wouldn't there, wouldn't water gather? No, what is let's not see what gathering. The, let's see what the inspector says. Do you have the inspector's report? All right, you can go ahead and go back. Roof appeared to be newer, but had sections that were raised and the roof line in the rear was depressed over the kitchen. The flat roof had bubbling and sealant was missing around the edges where the roof meets the home. Specifically right. saying that it's not um, sealed. Recommends, re recommend repairs to shingles that are not flush against the sheathing and sealing all possible water penetration points, flat roof and flashing areas. Further valuation of sheathing and framing due to depressed area and no view of interior roofing. That's what he's recommending. All right, flashing valleys. Flashing around chimney and dormers was poorly installed and should be flush and sealed to prevent water intrusion. 
All trim was deteriorating. Some areas were rotting and missing. This is eight months or True. how many months after the roof? Not, not even a year. Not even a year. I do want to point out, Your Honor, that um, I went down to ta the township yesterday. He had gotten a, a building permit on the job. The township inspector passed the roof. So I just want to make a note. To yeah, but you, but you, you warranty your work, right? Right. Now, here's the thing also. Flashing and caulking around skylights did not appear adequate. Water leakage may occur. Damage and previous repairs noted at interior indicates the skylight has leaked in the past. Moisture meter indicated the area was dry on the day of inspection. Dry. Yeah, I know. Monitor for leakage and repair as necessary. All right. Um, so according to you, you've gone out and you've uh, obtained an estimate from a roofer, another roofer, as to how much it would cost to repair the things that are in question, correct? Yes, yeah, and he's from Newark, and he came and stepped back and took a look and told me uh, what he can do as I have this. Did he go on the roof? Well, he did when the partial up, he looked back and then went up to the ladder because he was doing my neighbor Pat house, and he got a phone call and he was telling the guy, I'll be there, I'll be right there. So he was doing Pat. That okay, go one. ahead and hand, hand yeah. it. And this is his information, and this is the other one. I'm... Did you try to get him to come back? Oh, ma'am. I... And what's your answer to that? Thank you. Please. Yeah, my answer to that. <laughs> yeah, please. My answer to that is at the end of the job, right? The 160 that I was owed, he paid me $100. At the end of the job, he says, I'll owe you the $60. So I said, you know what? Okay, fine. I'll wash my hands of it. And I walked away from the job, and I'm not going to do no favors for somebody. It's We're, a $6,000 is... job. I mean, he's, he no, says no, no, you no. told him just forget the 60 But what difference does that make? No, no, no. It's not a matter of just forget the 60 It's somebody says, I'll owe you $60 at the end, and then he never comes by to is pay that... me the 60 Okay, but I don't understand. Is your position that when somebody pays you all but $60 of a $6,000 job, there's no warranty? No, what is it you're saying? No, no, no. The warranty is on leaks, okay? Is the roof leaking now? No. So there's always going to be some degree of bubbling. According to the new roofing roof. company, um, they believe the following needs to be done. Replace 4 by 8 sheet CDX ply board for 100 square feet. He feels like you didn't replace enough ply board. I replaced 10 sheets. There was no, I mean, why replace any sheets if I replace 10? I mean, why would I not replace another sheet? That makes no sense. And, and how can he, had it, go ahead, what were you going to say? He's, he, and also, he's going off a guesstimate here. Let's po point that out, too, because he didn't pull the shingles up. He doesn't right, know what's right. underneath Right, right, that's what I was there. about to say. How does he know that, that um, 100 square feet, because um, this is basically, hey, give me an estimate for the, the following, how much you think this should cost. This isn't what needs to be repaired yeah. specifically. The estimate doesn't say, this is what's wrong with the roof mm -hmm. and this is what it will cost to fix. It's just an estimate yes. for, you know, 100 square feet, which we don't know if 100 square feet is necessary. Well, if you tear up, he asks you, goddamn, if you tear up the shingle, because you have to rip up the shingle, and you have to put that new ply board over the side. I know how okay. you do the roof. Okay. What I'm saying is he hasn't even gone on the roof okay. and he gives a $1,400 estimate. May I speak? Not if you're going to repeat yourself. Nope. You're going to say something new and yep. elucidating? Yep. I'll be the judge of that. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So is waiting a year to complain about a roof too long? Yes, I think so. Why? Uh, if it's not written in the contract or there's no warranty, then it should okay, be. I'm going to disagree with you, but I want to hear what you guys have to say. I think it's too long. Why? Because you should have known. OK, let's try it a different way. How long should a roof last? It should last at least 10 years. Okay, so if they complain after a year and there are problems with a year, is a year too long? I would say no. It depends if it was faulty work, though. Well, I that's true. That's question. always true. Go inside the courtroom. As a loyal person I am, took them out the frame, make sure that, hey, you take your word, your word, and you're, you're the contractor. I look for you to do the job right. And most of all, I went by there 15 or 16 times. I figured he would came by as a gentleman to say, Brian, let me see what you're talking about. But to laugh at me, it almost got to where John... I would either take you to court or have to get into your face and do something that should be take care of business because you don't do your neighbor that way. Okay, don't Not talk that. to each other. We're talking right now about the case. Yeah. And I agree with you. He should have called you back, and at some point he just, um, there was no customer service. The question, though, is what are your damages? And your damages are very speculative because I don't have you giving me an estimate on what it will cost to repair the things you're complaining about. So, were there any leaks? No, that, that's when I actually went 
and check. But there's a, again, the roof not straight. And why are you suing for 2000 if your own estimate was 1450 Well, this is the pain and stuff that I lost a home. He put us to. No, I'm just saying to because when you approach a young man several to 15 times and he <laughs> take you for a joke, then he, when, he, when you put a high number like that, then he recognized you. It seemed like you don't get no respect until you slap him, and now you're getting respect. Okay. And you don't want to slap him. Okay. No, don't really slap like him. That. No, I'm just saying that's what the figure of speech of anything. A dog won't give you no respect until you say, hey, stop. Don't slap the dog either. Uh, <laughs> well, I rest the case on that one. Okay. <laughs> I am going to order as follows. I'm going to award the plaintiff at this time $500 to repair the things that I am looking at that I feel need repairing. Understand that that does not um, relieve you of the warranty. No, okay? I'm fine with that. Um, and um, you are free to, if, if in fact what you fear does happen, then you call him to repair it. And if he, in other words, if you get a leak, if you get a problem, all these things, you know, if the, the sky does come falling down, um, you are free to file another lawsuit. You understand that, right? For whatever damage, late, th that needs to be repaired at a later time. But at this time, all I can do is look at it and say, okay, he needs to hire somebody to get up there and do the things that were complained about in the report. Not he needs to hire somebody to replace 100 square feet of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not a, a good measure of damages because okay. this is entirely speculative. Okay. Verdict for the plaintiff, $500. That's okay. my judgment. Well, in a case that gave the judge some work to figure out what to do, Mr. Fur, the defendant, you're going to have to give him 500 bucks. No, I, I don't feel it was necessary because nothing technically is broke and nothing's leaking, but, you know, the judge finds in her... Uh, in his honor. Yeah. That, yeah, well, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, Will, you go back and fix whatever needs to be fixed, but you don't think anything needs to be fixed, right? Well, it doesn't at this point until the water comes in. Then it's broke. Okay. All right. Well, you heard the judge's decision. She was in a quandary over this one, so... Yeah. Good for you. All right? All right. That's it. Here, Mr. Brown, if you'll come out now. Mr. Brown, let me just ask you. I know you were seeking more money. You were well, $2,000, you know, a little bit for uh, pain and suffering. Or, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you got 500 bucks now. What are you going to do? Well, do I have to just leave it like it is? That's I mean, nothing is leaking yet, though, right? Well, I think the leaking is the part that is it's rotted wood dip. under there. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I thought the judge would realize, that the wood is... He didn't replace the ply board, well, and it needed to be done. Okay. You know? Sorry about that. That's okay. Alrighty. Thank you very much, okay. sir. You must sign a few documents. Right. Thank you. Great job. And that's it. Harvey, what do you think? Doug, I got to say, there is a huge advantage hiring a licensed contractor because licensed contractors are bonded. Um, you can check whether they're disciplined, whether they did a bad job, and otherwise you're rolling the dice. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. These are the plaintiffs, Keith McDonald and Renee Warnecki. Keith says he bought a motorcycle from the defendant, and a horrible guy tried to cover up a very dangerous problem which could have cost him his life. The chain broke. It punctured the engine, and oil was dripping down the back tire, which could have caused an accident. The defendant glued it all back together for the quick sale. He put his life in jeopardy, and he's here suing for the $4,800 it's going to cost him to fix the bike right. This is the defendant, Peter Karras. He says he sold the bike, which had been sitting for a few years, to the plaintiff. And now the guy's suing him eight weeks later for a so-called cracked engine. He has no idea what this man is talking about. Has no idea what he did with the bike for the last eight weeks. And has no idea why he's being sued today on this as-is sale. He's accused of attempting a cover-up. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a motorcycle from the defendant and says the guy covered up a potentially fatal problem. The chain broke and he Mickey Moused it together and it punctured the engine. The defendant says the guy had the bike for eight weeks. It's the case of Chain of Fools. Thank you, Douglas. Um, Keith McDonald and Renee Warren. Warnicki. Warnicki. 
course, common spelling, <laughs> Ronicky. Um, you are suing Peter Karras for $4,800, the estimate for a repair to a motor on a motorcycle that you bought from him. Yes. Uh, and you feel he knew that there was this defect. Tell me what happened. All right, so I get it home from buying it what from What kind him. of motorcycle is this? It's a 2009 Hayabusa. Made by Suzuki? Yes. Okay. And uh, what did you pay for it? 7000 All right. Was that a good price? Were you happy with your deal otherwise? It was the average price. Okay. So you bring it home on what day? Uh, the 17th. Uh, July 17th. Of 2017. And yes. what happens? So uh, first, when I was getting it from him, I noticed the chain was really loose on it. I asked like three times about it, and he kept diverting my attention to other things. Are you that easily diverted? Well, I mean, if you notice that a guy's being evasive about it, doesn't that raise a red flag? I just didn't think much of it at the time, but now I well, know why. Well, you thought much of it because you asked three times, you say. Well, it was really loose. I had to ride it pretty far. I know. So if you thought about it, why wouldn't you insist on an answer? Okay, so go on. So I get it home, and I start smelling weird smells because it was, was epoxy the heating up. You had said that the drive was how far? It was from Hop Hog to West Hampton no, but Beach. How many miles? I don't know, maybe 40. Okay. So you get it home, and what happens? I start smelling weird smells of it because the epoxy was heating up. And it smelled funny, like something cooking. Okay. You, you wait. At that point, all you know is that it smells funny. Yeah, it smelled okay. funny. And then? Like two days later, it starts dripping oil out of it. Okay. So I bring it to the dealership. I take dealership. it that before you bought it, you didn't have a mechanic look at it, right? No. Okay. Go ahead. And you can't see the engine on it without taking the whole bike apart. There's plastic fairings around the whole thing. Right, so but a mechanic can do that, right? Like, a mechanic could do that, yeah. Right, to take a look at the engine and to Well, the dealership said they wouldn't have picked up on this without taking the whole bike apart. So it's not, it, they'd have to take the engine apart to pick up on it? You have to take a lot apart, yeah, the cam, the cam cover. Right, but all they have to do is, is t it, take it apart enough to look at the engine, right? It's a couple hours work to take all that apart. To just see the engine? Yep. Okay. All right, so go on. So after three days, it's leaking. I bring it to the dealer and... Um, they, tell, they call me and say, I need to come down. This thing has got a lot of problems. What are the problems? They removed the water pump, sprocket cover, shift cover, oil pan, grinded all the epoxy down, and attempted a repair on it. Um, Where's the epoxy? Uh, it's all over the engine. I have pictures of it all here. Yeah, let me see the pictures and let me see the, the uh, invoice Here's, or the receipt yeah, yeah. or proposal that the dealership gave. What's going on? I had the bike for six years. I Were only, you the first owner? I was the second owner. Uh, I put about 3,000 miles on it. I never had <clears throat> any issues with the bike at all. It was mechanically sound, cosmetically sound. How long had the bike been sitting? About two years, two and a half years. Without my, being ridden once? Well, my brother would ride around my development. I had a construction accident, so I wasn't able to ride anymore. And I never had any issues with that bike. Appears that drive chain broke and smashed the sprocket. Where's that? Where's the drive chain? Where's the sprocket cover? Inside or outside? It's on the left side, inside. OK, what's the chain that you said you saw loose? The drive chain. So that is visible from the outside? Yes. And according to you, you saw it that, that it had a problem and still bought it? It was just loose. It's a five minute thing to tighten it. Unit has damage on rear swing arm from drive chain contact. Epoxy repair on cases. What say you to that? What's well, I, what I say is the chain was probably loose on the way home on his 50-mile drive, and, he, and the chain broke off and hit that, no. that thing and caused the damage on the way home is what the I feel happened. The transmission shifter cover has silicone on gasket. We'll send pictures of damage. You have the do you have? OK. We both acknowledged that the chain was loose. It's a common stretch. It just needs to be adjusted every few years, but I hadn't ridden the bike, so there was no reason to adjust it. What are you doing in this picture? You have a wrench. Putting a license plate on. What am I looking at in this picture? That is the cracked case. OK. Do you have anything in writing when you sold this to him? No. No? No bill of sale no. or anything like that? No. And this is uh, how old a bike? 2009. 2009. I mean, Judge, there is no epoxy on the planet that will hold 
a engine together under that kind of pressure? There's no pressure under it. It's just oil. Then why would it leak? See, but it here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold on. Metal. Stop talking. So is this guy stuck? He asked about the chain. The guy was evasive. Definitely. Yeah. He should have seen all the red signs. He should have seen the signs for sure. What do you say? He's just stuck. He has, it's his fault. Is he stuck? Is he stuck? I guess so, yeah. If he bought it, then that's his problem. Especially since there was some feeling he had about the chain. Right, exactly. Okay, going inside the courtroom. You bought a an eight-year-old used bike, and when you buy a used vehicle, it's an as-is sale. I understand. Unless you can prove that they knew something. How are you going How about... How could you have it for that long and not know? I had it for three days and knew. I don't know. I mean, I have four other bikes, than, and I know every inch of every I mean, But other I than go to him, what else do I do? You know what I'm saying? You just know your machines when you own things. You know them. You know, you talk about how it would take hours to get to it to see the crack, but he's supposed to know it. Um, you know, you test drove it. You rode it around. You I were able to ride it for 50 it. miles. I mean, maybe if the thing was loose, you shouldn't have ridden it for 50 I miles. I never got to test drive it. Why wouldn't you test drive something you're buying? He drove it around the block, and I watched. Why wouldn't you test drive it? I don't know. He wouldn't let you? Did you ask? What, what, but it would have drove fine. That, that wasn't I, the problem. That's not my question. I'm just curious how your mind works. That's uh, I'm just kind of curious how your mind works. So you don't you say, you ride it around and let me see how that looks like it might feel. I like it's know. weird. <laughs> it had 4,500 miles on it. I know, I but you know, when you have as is, as is sales, you have to understand, you know, there's, and there's 50 miles that you drive, uh, you know, the, it could, maybe something went wrong on the way home. Would that be his fault? No. It would just have to be because of the timing, because then Nobody the exception would swallow up the rule, you see. If I, if I would just turn around and say, you know what, it happened so fast that it, it must be your fault, then there's no, ex there, there's no as is. It's not a brand new motorcycle that you bought from a dealer and then you find out that it, it's a lemon and then you have certain rights under the lemon law. When you buy a used vehicle, you don't have any of those rights. It's buyer beware. So it's as is unless he makes a specific warranty, like, I just put in a brand new engine. And then you take it and your guy says, that's not a brand new engine, he's a liar. Right, then that, then we got something there. Then I'd be ordering him to return your money. But if short of that, um, and he's a second owner, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to say. There's not a whole Thing lot. is supposed to be in perfect condition. I pay 7,000 for a bike, I have to spend $5,200 to fix. Yeah, that's, that's, that happens a lot. You can't own it for six years and not know. Then, then, the, then in your world, the exception would swallow the rule. If you're saying to me, anybody who buys a used car or used motorcycle, once they find out that there's stuff wrong with it, should be able to return it because there's no way a guy can own something and not know it. If I were to, if that were the law, well, then there would be no it. rule that it is as is. Verdict for the defendant. Well, unfortunately, the plaintiffs were not able to prevail here in court. Mr. McDonald, you understand what the judge was explaining to you? And the, the defendant had said he hadn't ridden it much in the last two years. It's been sitting around pretty idle. It sounds to me like you probably should have test driven it yourself. Would you agree? It wouldn't have showed anything test driving it. I rode it 50 miles. It didn't show till the next day. Well, what can we say? Unfortunately, it's your bad luck, I guess. Anyway, yes, so. you couldn't, couldn't prove it in court, so I'm sorry for you. Okay? All right, thank you. You must sign a few documents on your way out of the courtroom. Mr. Karras is on his way out of the courtroom. I mean, what can you say? You, you certainly didn't know it was about to happen. Right? Very, I'm very pleased with the judgment, judge's ruling, because uh, the, the bike never had mechanical errors. Interesting. It's unfortunate, but it, it's what happened. No question. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank okay, you, you must sign a few documents yourself. Harvey. Doug, there's only one other way this guy could have won, which is to prove fraud, but the fact is there's no fraud here. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Christine Adams Charette. She says she was driving her brand spanking new 2017 Mitsubishi Mirage down a two-way street, and the crazy defendant made a left turn directly in front of her, and she hit him in the rear, which caused him to crash into a BMW. Her beautiful brand new car was totaled. The defendant was found to be 100% at fault, and she's out $5,000 because the defendant only had 10 grand worth of insurance on his policy. She just wants to be made hole on this nightmare and is suing the defendant for the five thousand dollars she's still out
This is the defendant, Roy Vargas. He says he was driving home from his mom's grave and made a left-hand turn and was hit from behind by the plaintiff. She was going around 80 miles an hour in a 35 zone, and he's lucky to be alive. The plaintiff, it turns out, is a greedy, trashy person who's trying to cash in because she didn't have adequate insurance. Sorry, lady. This has already been sorted out by the insurance companies, and he owes nothing. He's accused of not paying attention behind the wheel. All parties, please, you're ready in. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant cut in front of her and messed up her Mitsubishi Mirage. But the defendant says the plaintiff hit him from behind and she was speeding. It's the case of you, little Mitsubishi. Christine Adams Charette. Yes. You are suing Roy Vargas for $5,000 in damage to your vehicle caused by an accident that you say was his fault. Tell me what happened. Um, on July 20th, um, I was on my way to the post office and I was traveling north on Whittier Road and Mr. Vargas turned out in front of me without any indication that he was going to while I was already in the intersection. Um, insurance paid me, it totaled my brand new car. So uh, everybody was going full speed, nobody was braking? I, I, yes, because I was driving straight into the road doing the speed limit and he cut out over in front of me. I have a diagram. Had hit the front of his car hit the back of your car? No. He went into the intersection in front of me, so So we you ended hit up this hitting way. him, but yes. you had the right of way. Yes, I actually okay. have a letter from the insurance company stating that I was found not at fault and that Mr. Vargas was found 100% at fault. Okay. Um, and what's your version of how the accident happened? I was driving home. I put my blinker on and made the left turn. I was already out of the intersection. She hit the back of my car. She right, hit me. but what right do you have to make a left in front of oncoming traffic? She has a right of way. You're she not was no, she, there was no light. She was way, way down speeding, but I didn't know she was speeding at the time until she hit me. So, wait, mm -hmm. wait, so she was, how fast was she going? Um, more than the speed limit, 35. I would say 70 by the damage on my if car. If you see a car going 70 miles an hour, why do you make a left turn in front she of She was it? way down by the deli. So you see her and you still made the left turn? Yeah, I had a, enough time, I thought. It looks like you didn't. Yeah. And did anybody else conclude that she was going 70 miles an hour? I don't know. The cops? There, there was another car accident, so only one cop stayed after they told us we were all okay. So the fire department, everybody left. My and question was, cop. did you get a ticket? No. Okay. Uh, your insurance company found you at fault and paid, right? Yes. Uh, your insurance company, that, and when you said you had a letter from the insurance company, you're referring to his insurance company. Um, it's from my insurance. It says that Miss uh, Christine Adams Charette was involved in an accident. She was found not at fault for the accident. Claimant Vargas was found at fault for the accident. By and whom? Your insurance company. Geico accepted 100% for the accident. Meaning that's the that's other his. company. Correct. That's my insurance. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so now how much were you paid by his insurance company? Um, Every check that I received is from my insurance company, so I... You never got paid by his By Geico, no. Did you have insurance? I did. The, the claim is still open. They said they're waiting for paperwork. Or did you go through... I went through my insurance. Oh, I see. So, so, I have so you subrogated to... What's your insurance? Progressive. So Progressive will sue Geico or collect... They won't have to sue. Geico will just take responsibility mm -hmm. and then reimburse Progressive for the money. That's I... how you chose to do it. All right, so what are you suing for here? So I bought the car for $17,945.06. I was paid out by insurance for $12,775.39, and that leaves a $5,169.67 balance. So I'm suing for the maximum of $5,000 to make myself because, whole again. Because your insurance company only gave you the value of the car at the time of the crash as opposed to the value that you paid for the car how many months before? Um, I only had it for 62 days. So if the insurance company says that um, so-and-so is at fault, the plaintiff or the defendant, is the judge bound to follow what the insurance company says? No, he's not. Why? Because the judge can overrule the insurance company based on information at hand that the insurance company is is following because... Do me a favor. Just say, no, she's not. <laughs> no, she's not. Yeah, because you'll piss off the judge going inside the courtroom. Have you ever heard the expression that as soon as you drive off the lot, uh, the car depreciates in value? That's exactly what your insurance company um, had a right to do. And that's what they sue Geico for. And that's what his insurance company has to pay. In addition to the down payment, the 
money that was left over, I also had to put $1,500 down on a new car. And Well, that you never get. I mean, oh. you get what you get is the value of the loss. It stinks. I know, because you're not at fault in this accident. You have a car for two months. This is just awful. But um, what you're entitled to in the eyes of the law is the value of the item at the time that it's destroyed. And the blue book value in a private party sale in excellent condition, all of which I'm assuming is 10 grand. And your, company, your um, insurance company gave you 12 grand. They gave me 10,000 and then they reimbursed me my deductible. So it equal 12. So my job is to sit here and figure out whether you're entitled to more than that. And I, if you are, then he's the guy who has to pay it. I just feel like it was his negligence. Oh, just, I totally feel like it was his negligence. I mean, did you have to rent a car? Um, no, because we had, did not have coverage, so I had to struggle trying to find rides to and from work and inconvenience others. And I mean, I had my two-year-old da daughter in the car. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but it was just not a good situation. No, no. The third vehicle actually asked him and said, you didn't see her coming. And what, wait, there was a third vehicle? There what was. He, after he hit me, or well, after he caused right. me to hit him, he hit into the BMW. And the BMW driver actually asked him, like, you didn't see her coming? Like, she was, she was right there. And his response was, oh, no, I was actually admiring your BMW. Did you say that to the BMW driver? Uh, no, I just told me a nice car. I didn't say that. But oh, that was a direct quote. A little stretch over there. She actually hit me say? so hard that my car slid across the whole highway and hit his car. That's and what happened. Did you say to him, I didn't see her because I was admiring your car? No, he never even spoke to me. Neither did she. All she got out of her car and said, oh, are you okay? I'm so sorry. What, you, End of are you mocking her? No, I'm telling you, that's all she said to me. Oh, are you okay? What was it? Yeah. Were you mocking her? Because you caused this whole grief for everybody. No, I didn't cause I mean, it. I think, yes, you did. We yes, the accident that. was your fault. You caused the grief. Okay. Yes. Your own insurance company threw you under the bus, okay? So, yes, it's your fault. Pay attention. Don't make a left if there's oncoming traffic. So, yes, it's your fault. You have inconvenienced and cost her tons of money. And by, through a technicality, really, um, not really a technicality, but through because of the way the law is interpreted, you know, she, she's going to end up eating so much money that you're mocking her in my courtroom? You're doing no, that? I'm not mocking her, but I don't but see what? Did she not have gap insurance? Because in New York, I thought gap insurance was required. It's gap insurance required no. in New York State, folks? I thought gap insurance was something. You, it's interesting. He got gap insurance. You're only going to get 10 grand. But he wants to make sure his damages are covered so he gets gap insurance. Right. Uh, no, she doesn't have to get gap insurance. You got 10000 $10,775.39 plus the deductible return. Oh, so you, okay. Sometimes life is unfair. You got what you were supposed to get. And if you got what you were supposed to get, just because he annoys me, I can't make him pay you more. <laughs> Verdict for the defendant. Well... The plaintiff did not have a good day here. How do you feel? Um, I just feel like I should have been made whole again. I should have been entitled to what I paid for the car. I only had it for 62 days, and the accident clearly was not my fault. Well, boy, the judge sure did feel for you. Definitely. I mean, no question about it. Very unfair, she thought. Mm -hmm. But that's the law. Yep. And you got to live there. All right. I'm so All sorry right. for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here comes the defendant now. Even though the judge kind of threw you under the bench okay. there, you're you're happy. Yeah, why not? I, I won, so yeah. I don't have to pay her. She doesn't deserve anything. She she really should get something though. Don't you feel for her? No, I don't. Not at all. Not at it all. was your fault, and you don't feel sorry for well, her. It, it's still you know, it's my word versus hers. I still feel like well, well. That's she's terrible. Good. That's terrible. I know I'm a terrible person. You are. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. How about that, Harvey? What do you think? You should know that the insurance company's decision on who's at fault has absolutely no bearing on the judge. Judges can make a decision regardless of what the insurance company says and, by the way, regardless of what the police report says.